The harp is one of our earliest musical instruments. Since the Middle Ages, it has been associated with the celestial music of heaven and regarded as the favorite instrument of the angels. Crafted from one of nature's greatest gifts, the wood of trees, the harp reminds us that there is an essential harmony among all life on earth. A reminder that humanity should conserve and use nature's gifts with reverence and respect. When we play harps made from natural wood, we are perpetuating the life of the trees by bringing to the world inspired music that resonates with body and soul. Playing the harp has been my passion and my life's work. During my career, I've had the great pleasure of playing on a wide variety of wonderful kinds of harps. For me, music is a way of bringing to the outer world an expression of the inner world of spirit and the imagination. Inspired by a deep sense of gratitude and love of nature, I embarked on a pilgrimage with my medieval harp ensemble, Angelorum. We left our homes in the San Francisco Bay Area in Northern California and headed for the Highlands of Scotland. We were excited to visit the workshop of Art of All Harps and to meet the wonderful team that makes the medieval harps that most of us play. And then to go on to our main mission, to play music for the trees in the very forest where the wood for our harps comes from. Our journey starts at the annual Edinburgh International Harp Festival and then continues on to the Highlands. Coming from California to Edinburgh gives the members of Angelorum the opportunity to perform for fellow harpists and it gives students from around the world the special opportunity to study with Cheryl Ann in person. Over decades, Cheryl Ann has developed and honed her touch and tone technique, which combines whole body awareness with precise patterns of physical movement. Her approach cultivates a special connection between the breath and the music played that merges the body's natural energies with the resonance of the harp. We do have to have an understanding of what we're going for, understanding the movement and how to achieve it. And then through that calm, clear, correct repetition, you program the body to that response. So what happens is, when you start to make music, you sing and your body sings. So how lovely though, right, when you're playing your harp, to begin to use your body, what, what Joe Vernardi in 1636 calls the living touch of the finger on the string to use that feeling to actually begin to sense and be sensitive to the actual resonance of your harp, how your harp, and then playing different harps and seeing how they feel and resonate differently. Scotland um, for me is very much like coming back home because I'm from Dublin, Ireland, going to the festival, um, being with other harpists from all over the UK and from the States and other parts of the world was so special because we're all interested in the harp and uh, we have that common interest. For me this trip is a combination of wonderful things. First of all, it's a chance to 
work for months with this wonderful group with Cheryl. And secondly, it's a chance for me to revisit Scotland, where I spent a very happy year in university at Edinburgh. And I'm very excited also to visit Ardival Harps and see how the harps are made and visit the forest, and see the trees that they source the wood from. I'm seeing a part of the world I never thought to see. I'm playing music that I never really expected to play many years ago, that being medieval harp music. And I'm thrilled to be able to take my harp to it, its land of origin. We're just now setting off on the part of the trip that I'm most excited about because we played in Edinburgh at the harp festival, which was really neat. But the part I'm most excited about is going to see the forest where the harps were made and talking to the harp makers and seeing more of the land that this instrument comes from. What I've really enjoyed most about the festival is having a chance to get to know other members of Angelorum in a fuller way than I've been able to before. And coming to Streff Peffer is uh, very meaningful because I just love knowing about the origins of things, uh, tracing things to their roots and being able to actually go to the forest and see the living trees um, from which the harps were made and then being able to go to the workshop and see how they're made is profound. Amongst the earliest images of harps from anywhere in the world are found harps carved in picter stones here in the Highlands, which show harps, clearly frame harps. Um, and these date from about the 9th century, 9th to 10th century. These harps um, were very important, clearly, to the Picts who showed images of animals they cared about, um, objects that, that were important to them, people. And these are the earliest harps we have in Europe. We make different sizes of harps and the, the images that we have surviving from stone carvings to paintings show us the, the scale of the harp in terms of uh, the relationship to, to, to the human body. The oldest harp that I make is based on a 8th or 9th century Pictish harp and that, that's very small, that's a small harp and that's got a lime body and sycamore arm and pillar and an oak back. And the construction of the, the Pictish harp is exactly the same as the construction of the medieval harp. So this is how they would have made it, is a solid block and they would have carved it in from the back. And we then need to seal that up. So we use a piece of oak um, and that leaves you something that's nice and thin, that can go in, that's not going to make the instrument heavy, but it's going to be strong enough to seal it up to give you that sound box that, that's needed to, to project the sound. Around the world, people have been using wood for centuries or longer. When they're managed sustainably, forests can provide timber and wood, as well as habitat for wild animals, clean air, and clean water. They're one of the ultimate renewable resources.
This pilgrimage to the Highlands of Scotland has put us in touch with a culture that still resonates with its ancient past and with the land and nature in this part of the world. Just as Michelangelo believed that the figures he carved were already contained in the marble stones, our harps lie dormant in the wood, waiting to be revealed and bring music to the world. Playing music for the trees here, where the wood for our harps once grew, has given us the chance to give thanks and to harmonize with them and with nature. <laughs>